Hi, this is David Harper of Bionic Turtle with a quick review of the bivariate normal distribution. I selected this today because yesterday in starting to approach credit risk portfolio models, we looked at the credit metrics model and we saw the treatment for a single bond. When we move from a single bond to a portfolio of bonds, we have to consider the application of the bivariate normal distribution. To understand, I start here with the univariate normal distribution. This is the familiar bell curve. It's so common we don't even put the univariate in front of it typically. This is a normal probability density function. It's not discrete. It's continuous. That's why it's a PDF, not a PMF. And it gives us the probability that the random variable x will fall between two values, x1 and x2. We have to use intervals because this is continuous and there are theoretically an infinite number of points on this line. So for example, we could be talking about the probability that the random variable x will be greater than x and less than this x2 here. That probability, contrary to some misunderstanding, is not given by the point on the line. So for example, the probability of here is not 4%, rather it's the area within the rectangle that's carved out. If we draw a vertical line here, then, then we draw a vertical line here, we're going to have a, a thin sliver, a slice here, which has width. And if we take that width and then multiply it by the height of those lines, we're going to get a tall, thin rectangle, and the area of that curve as a percent of the total area into the curve is the probability. So that's the univariate normal. Now let's look at the analogous graph of the normal bivariate. And we move from a univariate distribution to a bivariate distribution. That is to say from one random variable x to two random variables x and y. So now the probability question is, what is the joint probability? Notice joint meaning and. They both have to be true at the same time. What is the joint probability that the random variable x will fall within an interval? And at the same time, the random variable y will also fall within an interval. And so to graph this, we move from the two dimensions, x, y, to three dimensions, x, to describe the random variable x, y, to describe the random variable y, and z, to describe the function. And so the old y-axis becomes the new z, and we move from a two-dimensional surface to, to a three-dimensional mountain. And you can almost see where the two standard normal distributions come together to carve out the mountain. And how can we think about that joint probability within this graph? Well, if I move above this graph, now I'm going to try and move pretty much on top of it, then the joint probability that both x is within an interval and y is within an interval is described. If we think about a rectangle here, if we think about an, some interval here on the x-axis and some interval here on the y-axis, they would come together and describe a rectangle here that would be on the base of this mountain or pyramid and it would be the area underneath the mountaintop surface and above that rectangle. That area here is a percent of the total area under the mountain but above the surface would characterize graphically the joint probability that both random variable x and random variable y fall within their respective intervals. This is a bivariate density distribution and just as our n normal distribution that we usually work with has both a density and a cumulative, so does this bivariate. So we move from a mountaintop, which is the density function, to a cumulative distribution function. So here is the same assumptions, but previously we were looking at a density dis distribution and now we're looking at a cumulative distribution function and mathematically we express this as what is the probability, the joint probability, that the both the random variable x is less than or equal to some value x and the random variable y is less than or equal to some r value y. So notice the difference in the density, in the bivariate density distribution, we're talking about the joint probability that x and y are within some interval. And then when we move to the cumulative, 
it's the joint probability that X and Y are less than or equal to some value. This has application for us in credit portfolio models because typically this will describe a default when the random variable X becomes less than or equal to some value. Then we're defaulting here and we're interested in the joint probability that both of the obligors jointly default. And so we move from the mountaintop to this kind of surface. And similarly, if we think about perhaps, let's just say, the joint probability that both X and Y are less than or equal to 5%, that would be X at 5% here, Y at 5% here. Maybe somewhere here would be the joint probability that both would be less than or equal to 5%. And so finally, to show you a numerical example of this, this is the spreadsheet that I'll upload to the website if you'd like to take a closer look. Unlike the density function, which con conveniently has an analytical solution, the cumulative bivariate does not. So I won't go, I certainly won't go into the details of the spreadsheet because it's all an approximation, but it's real simple in terms of inputs. Here we're just assuming there's one input. Here would be a bond, maybe with a 5% chance of default. So that's the, uh, marginal cumulative distribution for that single bond. So we can just think of that as the univariate probability right there. And then I have a second bond here. This is obligor number two. Let's just similarly say it also has a 5% chance of default. And so we're interested in that joint or bivariate cumulative distribution function. What are the, what's the probability that both of the bonds default? And that's the probability that Random variable X here is less than or equal to 5%, and random variable Y is also equal to less, less than or equal to 5% at the same time. The difference here, and the point of the whole exercise, is we can insert a correlation assumption between the two. And so, for example, if I go way down to zero here, my joint probability of both default defaulting if each marginal probability of default is 5% is what you would expect. It's 0.25 because we're assuming independence here, and that means if we multiply the 5% by 5%, we get the 0.25%. We don't need a complicated formula for that when there's independence. However, as I start to add correlation, then the then it becomes more difficult, and then we're using this Coppola approach, or and specifically what kind of Coppola specifically here a uh, bivariate normal distribution, which is utilizing the correlation. And now we're, now it's telling us that if each of the bonds has a marginal probability of a uh, default of 5% and their default correlation, so to speak, is 0.1, then the joint probability of default, meaning the probability that both default simultaneously is 0.37. And you can see if I bring this up, the formula won't take one, but if I bring this up almost to one, we're going to get what we expect. If they're almost perfectly correlated, this joint probability is almost the 5% because they move completely in tandem. So that's a summary. This is David Harper, The Bunnock Turtle. Thanks for your time.